I might have a new favorite show. Again. 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 Huh. I really can't decide what my favorite show is. Eh, whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we are finally talking about Stargirl Season 3 Frenemies. Now, you might be thinking, Huh? You do know this season ended, this show ended a while ago, right? Well, I know. But, I am always late to the Arrowverse shows, including Stargirl. So, I always am behind, and I finally caught up on the show. I finished Season 2 a while ago, made a video on that, and I finally finished Season 3, the final season, which I really enjoyed. So, similarly like Season 2 of Stargirl, as well as my Superman and Lois reviews, I did not write any notes, so there's a very, very good chance I'll forget a bunch of stuff, but I just make another video, right? But yeah, so let's get started. I don't know where to even start, honestly. So... I think I'm just gonna start by saying that this season felt almost it really did it almost felt like an epic finale to a trilogy, which is what I'm probably gonna use for the title of this. But there are some parts where you're like, yeah, you can tell this was not originally supposed to be the fa final season, but I still thought it was really fun, and it kind of does feel like a, this trilogy with Star Girl, Star Girl Two, uh, Summer School, and Star Girl Three, Frenemies. But yeah, so speaking of the title, Frenemies. There are a lot of redemption arcs in the show, and a lot of fake redemption arcs. So, let's start off with the one that we got teased in la the end of the last season, which was none other than Cindy Berman herself. So, she's I, I really enjoyed that, that she got her character arc. I like the fact that they did turn her good. But, but they also didn't do it in a way where it felt like a completely different character. It, she still felt like the jerk Cindy Berman, but she wasn't full-on evil. And, like, they tried to make us think that she was the killer. I was like, I highly doubt that. It'd be way, way too obvious. So, I think... So, so I really enjoyed that. And then we also had, um, uh, what are the names? The Crocs. They, tur they had this redemption arc too, which they were just hilarious. I loved them this season. Like they were, all they were, they were always pretty enjoyable villains, but seeing them turn into good guys was just the best. And I loved that. It was so much fun, which is why I was very upset at the end of the season. But we'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah, I really enjoyed all the character arcs for those villains. Even the gambler got a small character arc, even though he was offed. What, they did fin follow up with Courtney go finding his daughter and giving her the gambler's letter, which I thought was really sweet. Especially because once we got that far into the season, I kind of forgot about that plot line. So I'm really glad the writers didn't and they tied that in because that was a really sweet moment. And I mean, this season is just full of sweet moments and great character development. Like, especially in my personal opinion, between Pat and Courtney, as well as between Mike and... And, oh gosh, what's her name? Uh, Courtney's mom's. Oh gosh, I'm blanking on her name. Barbara, that's her name. Barbara's her name. Between uh, Mike and Barbara, that was really sweet. Should there were even some great emotional moments between Beth and her parents, and even Yolanda and her parents. Shoot, he, even with Rick and the JSA, there were sweet moments. So that, And there were, there were even sweet moments between Courtney and... And, uh, what's his name? High School Junior, the high school's kid. What's his name? Cameron. Cameron, that's his name. Like, uh, it just, it was awesome. So many moments that actually made me surprisingly emotional, as well as just put a huge smile on my face, just I love the characters. That's what I love the, the most about this show, the show, for the entire three seasons, where the characters, I just really loved all, spending time with all these characters. And what, they did a great job making not just Courtney, who is the title character, but every character, all the members of the JSA, and even a bunch of side characters. And apparently even some villains. Let's talk about the villains, since we're talking about villains. The ones that were not redeemed. They did this interesting thing where... The main villain was kind of the Ultra Humanite. They did this huge twist that I... I'm not gonna lie, the thought crossed my mind, but then I was like, eh, I'm not so sure about that, though. But it ended up being true that... Starman, who he thought somehow came back from the dead, is actually the Ultra Humanite in in Starman's body. 
that was a pretty great twist, especially because they revealed that it was him the entire time we saw him, even in season one and two. That was a great twist, in my personal opinion. And then they also brought back Dragon King in the gorilla that Ultra Human Knight was originally in, as well as they brought back Icicle. And I actually thought it was kind of cool that they brought all of them back, just because of the fact that it was the final season, and it kind of gave it that full circle feel of season one and now season three. I just thought that was a great, like, full circle, it felt. That's why I was pretty okay with it. And, yeah, I th the villains were, I thought, were pretty good this season. And the way they were defeated, I think, is kind of kind of brutal. And also kind of dark, but they, they do want, like, one is done for com comedy, but it's really dark. So, the, the entire action, all the action scenes, again, are great. I, I just thought they were great. And... I almost forgot to mention other characters too, like the Shade, which we have right here. I really enjoyed. Like I loved seeing the Shade again. He, he he was just a great, enjoyable character. I loved his redemption arc as well. Like going back to his moments, like uh, Mike finally got to meet his mom, but then when he gets back in the car, he calls Barbara his mom, which is super sweet. Courtney calls Pat her dad and says that he's her hero, not Starman anymore. That was really sweet too. And. Every scene with y where Yolanda interacted with her mother, where where they got more attention, I feel like, this time around than the previous two seasons. In season one, she was the extremely strict mother that got extremely annoying. In season two, we barely saw them. And then in season three, they, got, they brought the emotion to it where, even though she was still kind of annoying, it's like, get off Yolanda's back already. I get it, you don't trust her, and I understand, but come off it. Get... It's been how many years now? Get over it. But this season made it where it's like, I still feel that way. But I'm also like, oh, but you can see the, how much she loves her. Oh, my gosh. It was just great. And it was really emotional, too. I was surprised how emotional it was. Speaking of emotions, I am just going to jump all over the place and go to Artemis and her parents because... Oh, 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 okay. Artemis and her parents because they were... They were such fun characters this time around, but at the end of the sh in, towards the end of the show, they killed off her parents, the Crocs, uh, which made me so sad because I started to love them. They were characters I absolutely loved, and I was really hoping that we'd get some awesome team-ups with them in the JSA. We didn't get that because they were killed off, and I hate it so much. I feel like that did add to the story, especially because of the fact that, like I said, it feels like the ending of a trilogy. What do what do what do trilogies like to do at the at the end to build stakes and make it feel like a high stakes ending? They kill off characters. I mean, sometimes they bring them back to life, but you know, a lot these bad times they kill off characters. I mean, look at that. Look at the MCU. Up until Ant Man: Quantum Mania, the main character has lost something at the end of each third film the end of each trilogy so you know so even though i feel like it worked for the story it worked making artemis have like this motivation to you know kill kill high school and finally get him gone ho probably permanently i mean he came back once why can't he come back again however part of me was kind of hoping that mike could play some sort of role in defeating him at least the first time just because it would have been like awesome because like i feel like with Mike defeating Ice School, I loved how they brought that back. because, Especially because, like, in Season 1, when they first did it, it was kind of like a joke. Like, oh, no, this guy just can't be defeated. Mike accidentally hits him with a car. Oh, that was funny. He got defeated because Mike, who's inexperienced, hit a guy with a car by, a by accident. Ha ha. But then in Season 2, it comes back to bite him in the butt, and he actually feels bad about it, and he feels scared about it because of the fact that, like, he technically did accidentally murder him and he left two par two parents grieving a son even if one of them ended up being a jerk anyway and and a son fatherless and uh eclipso even gives him nightmares about uh cameron coming to being angry at him and trying to kill him and i mean they did a whole terrible thing where they they made him th made him think that he killed the dog too like how dare you how dare you uh that was too far. Oh, wait, we're talking about season three. Sorry. But yeah. And then this season, they brought it, they leaned even more into it because, like, half the storyline was practically that. 
it was the McKent's grieving Icicle and planning revenge. So I just think they did such a great job with that. And I love the fact that they brought it back. But my only problem with it is that they brought it back. They had such emotions for it with both Courtney, Cameron, and even and Mike. But when we got to like the finale, then it really, they just kind of dropped it. I felt like it was like, oh man, I really wanted to ha I really wanted to see Mike and Cameron interact after Cameron found out that Mike was the one who accidentally killed him. And I was kind of hoping Mike could like get, in, get into some of the action with Icicle and, and beat him on purpose and not kill him. Almost like redeem himself, almost, if you think about it. Because yeah, he technically did save the day and that's what fake Starman told him. Like, you avenged me, you're, you're like a hero. But the um, but he still kind of felt bad about it. So I feel like if they got, had him get in on the action and beat him without killing him, and then you know have Armas kill him later on, like they did, I think that would have been really satisfying because it's like Mike beat him on purpose, not on accident, on purpose, and he did not kill him. I think that would have been some great. Some great redemption, some great full circle. Like, I just thought that could have been nice. But that's not what they did, so okay. I also like how the fact that uh, Cindy and, and oh my goodness, what's the kid's name? Jerome? Is that his name? The kid who has Thunderbolt. Those two defeat her father, and because, you know, he's now in love with, in love with her, which I kind of. One the, another reason why I wish we got season four was because I would have loved to see that continue, just because it was so funny and comedic the way they did it. But you know, we're not getting season four, no. They'd rather make Gotham Knights instead of Stargirl season four. I don't know why. That's what they'd rather do. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to get over that. So I thought that was pretty great. And um, the whole story, too, the whole murder mystery I thought was done really well. Where we got, we got like these, these clues. And was, I thought it was re really funny. They were like, Dragon King's back. He's, he could be the murderer. Up, oh, false alarm. Dragon King's not back. Wait, Dragon King is back and in a new body. That was that was kind of funny and interesting. And one thing I have to say though, like, like the JSA seeing more of them is just great. Star Girl has a pretty good arc where she, where it feels like she very much fully comes in to being Star Girl because of the fact that because of the fact that she finally gets to interact with <coughs> who she thinks is Starman for a while and prove that she is worthy to be Star Girl. And finally closing out, like, almost kind of like closing out her origin, in a way. Because now she's, like, fully Stargirl. And, you know, that's also when they decide to end the show. But whatever, I'll try to get over it. Yeah, so I thought that was great. And then, when it comes to, to Beth, it, it was, I really loved seeing her character arc, her, her grow, and how she... And how she interacts with her, her parents too now that they know who she is. Yolanda, like I mentioned, with her and her parents was great. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes she got on my nerves, but because of how much I feel like she got angry at Courtney a bit too easily. But however, I do feel like it was very much in character for her not, not trust Cindy, especially because even before Cindy was trying to murder her, she was causing issues in the school for her. So I didn't I didn't blame her for not trusting Sydney. And same thing with Rick. He had some moments that I was like, really? Come on, dude. But I thought he had a pretty good story because of how we know who he is. We know how his character can, can act. He definitely seems like the kind of person who would be like, you know, hey, I can I can remove the timer on this on the hourglass. that gives me st super strength. Uh, yeah, 24-7 super strength. And then introduces this entire problem where it's altering his personality. He's almost addicted to it. Almost like an addiction storyline. And whenever he try, when he try, finally tries to take it off, it really hurts him. Now, sadly, I feel like they didn't go anywhere with this storyline. I do think because it is because of the fact that I, th I think they were going to continue that in season four, but we're not getting that now, so that's why it kind of like didn't go anywhere. But I think that was a great storyline that could have gone further, and it just didn't. But that's you know that's what's going to happen. Whoops! Didn't mean to blow up the car. My bad. I'm good. Why? But yeah, so I thought I th I really enjoyed all the character arcs. And something I do want to talk about is how they decided to end it too with um that like final scene at the at the end with like 10 years later. 
I thought it was really interesting and it was kind of satisfying the way the way they decided to do that. We've struck it big this time. What are you gonna do with your share, Jenny? I'm going to use the money to get Jenny. Brad back. He'll oh love me if I'm rich. Oh, Speaking boy. of Jenny, that reminds me. Jenny and her brother had two episodes in this season, which I almost forgot to talk about. So those two episodes very, very much felt like back a backdoor pilot two part a two part backdoor pilot to a a series kind of for both the Mr. Bones and everything he was running with, which I forget the name of, as well as a backdoor pilot with, for like this other superhero team with J Jenny, the Shade, and Jenny's brother. Todd? Is that his name? I forget his name. They teased Sandman that they were going to go help him out, find other people with that have powers. Shade is going to teach them how to use their powers, like that setup. And then Mr. Bones is like, yeah, I think we need we should build a team our own. They even did this thing that that I've seen done before, I feel like in movies and shows that try to set stuff up. Where they showed us a bunch of rooms. Some some had fully casted characters, others had just a name on the plate. And I know I think every one of those were a reference to the character in the DC comics. I only knew like two and I can't tell you what they are right now because I'm blanking on who they were. But yeah, so that very much felt like a setup. I would watch any of those two shows, but we're not getting that show now so you know whatever it did kind of feel like the it's kind of weird too because like there was set up for this in season two both in in like the beginning part when jenny was first introduced and then like that that was the ending cliffhanger and then it gets two episodes that very much feel like we're taking a break from our main story to do this side plot that, that way it can branch off to its own show but it also it does have it does affect our main plot because it affects our characters and different things like it very much affects pat is like the biggest thing i can think of when he goes into the shadow realm so there's that and then but but it's not going anywhere if it does feel kind of weird that there was so much setup in two seasons for what almost feels like a backdoor pilot but you know i didn't mind i i enjoyed the characters that they introduced i would have watched the show if they made it but it's not happening now so you know and yeah, like I was about to say about the ten year later thing, I thought I I I think it was pretty satisfying how Mr. Sh how Mr. Shade explained how the JSA continued to fight and they are still continuing to fight ten years later. Star Girl is now Star Woman. Uh, Beth and Rick are now a thing apparently. We got more members of the team. Jerome is that his name? It, the kid who has th Thunderbolt joined the team. Mike became Stripe C 2.0. Sil Cindy became Dragon Queen and joined the part and joined the JSA. I believe they said Artemis joined the JSA as well. Uh, Cameron became Icicle and joined the JSA, and a bunch of other things. They they reference the three storylines we've gotten, plus they reference some other stuff that I, d I can't remember off the top of my head. I have to rewatch it. And then uh, Jay Garrick's The Flash shows up, which. Kind of confused because it's the same actor that was Jay Garrick in the Flash CW show, but he was also supposed to be dead in Stargirl season one. Now he's alive, but if you in, if you bring in the Flash TV show, there's a bunch of other complications. I don't know, but it was cool seeing him because I thought he was great in the Flash and and great in the episode that he was in, the two episodes actually now. And, and he, I love how he says how he does say how the Jets are still going on and they need help. And according to Courtney, the shade is a member of the JSA now, which is awesome. And and I, they also do. Whoa, you trying to hit me? They also do this thing to to where he's like, he, he's like, we're not our fight's not over yet. And, and shades like, is it ever? And then, and then the text says never the end, which I thought was pretty great. And I really enjoyed I thought all that was I thought that was a pretty decent way to end the show. And it also makes me feel like even though I was still 100 percent taking Stargirl 4, it feels like a good enough ending where it's like if I, we don't get a Stargirl 4 or a Stargirl Season 4, which we won't, it, it does feel like a pretty good ending. I think I heard that she's gonna have a crossover with Titans in like the second half of the newest season. But I don't know. I, I haven't seen Titans yet. I might have to check out one episode. If, if it's a crossover with the show, especially to see how it ties into the, the show, but we'll see what happens. 
at the time of this recording has not aired yet. Shoot, I don't think we even have any information on it. Except for, like, some leaks that it's going to be a crossover. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I th I'm really sad that, that the show's over. Especially because I think that every character in the show, to me personally, felt perfectly casted. Brett Bassinger is, like, the perfect star, which, I mean, from what I've heard about, uh, what's his name? Jeff, Jeff Lovnes? Is that his name? I don't remember. The creative star girl, which also had a big part in creating the show, based on his his sister, who I believe sadly passed away, and he he personally, I'm not sure if he was the main person who casted or if he was if he was like the only person or if he was j just had a big part in casting, but he had a big part in casting Breck Bastier as Courtney and like perfect casting, and then like everyone else, I feel like was perfectly cast as well. When the JSA, Pat, uh, the, the family, the, the villains, everyone just felt, like, awesome. And I kind of hope that they can return somehow. Shoot, I'd even be okay if they decided to, like, hey, we're making a Stargirl movie. Not at all connected to the TV show, but we're bringing the same cast. It would confuse a lot of people, but I'd be okay with it. It will never happen, though, I don't think. But yeah, super sad the show's ending. I am really glad, though that it was able to get an ending unlike some shows that were like you're over but we have this cliffhanger too bad they're gonna have the fans of the show are gonna have to suffer like uh kind of like legends of tomorrow which i don't also i also don't really understand how legends of tomorrow i, I i've seen huge campaigns for that show to be renewed and not star girl like what what's that about well i mean i guess because cliffhanger not cliffhanger but whatever but yeah so and what i find kind of funny is that the CW did it. They finally made a DC show that doesn't have, in my personal opinion, a bad season. Okay, that's finished, by the way. I should mention that's finished. Because Superman and Lois is still going on. So far, two seasons in, it's gr it's good. Not a bad season yet. Season three, I have not seen any of that yet. It's like just started airing at the time of I'm, I'm recording this. We may or may not get season four. That's still up in the air. But like, The Flash has had a couple bad seasons, and from what I hear, the final season isn't very good either. I haven't seen it yet, but I will. Arrow has had some bad seasons. Black Lightning has had bad seasons. Batwoman had only bad seasons. Legends had some bad seasons. And you know, so on and so forth. Stargirl, in my personal opinion, has not had a bad season yet. I also do love the fact that they did make each season feel both so different, but also very connected. Season 1 was coming of age, season 2 was horror, season 3 was murder mystery. And yet, it felt very connected and tight, like it didn't feel disjointed. I thought that was awesome. But yeah, I really enjoyed the show as a whole, and this season specifically. I might, I'm thinking about it, I might, one, have to rewatch the entire show as a whole. But I might, when I rewatch season 1, maybe make a review for that, since I reviewed seasons 2 and 3, but not 1. Because I saw the show, I saw season 1 way before I had a channel. And maybe after watching the three, do a ranking of the seasons. Because like right now, I think I'm leaning towards season two being my favorite. But I can't really judge it that much because, like, it's been a while since I've seen season one. So maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll have to like rewatch all three, make a review for one, and then rank them. We'll see what happens. Are you guys interested in that? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I should probably shut up because I feel like I've been rambling for a long time. But hey, I really enjoyed this show. I love the show, I love the season, I'm super sad it's over, but I mean, one, I guess it's better that it ends with three great seasons instead of being drawn out into having eight crappy seasons, or like have eight seasons and have four through eight suck, because I mean, some shows, I feel like it feels like that, like Flash and Arrow, the first two seasons were outstanding, after that kind of went downhill, I mean Arrow went up for five and back up for eight in my, my opinion, but, you know. So yeah, thanks so much for taking time to watch this video. If you like this video, please hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. Like I mentioned, I review season two of Star Girl as well as seasons one and two of Simeon and Lois, and a bunch of other Marvel and DC movies and shows. So if you're interested in that, please consider clicking the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I post and go live. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and yeah, I'm super sad this show's over. But what's that saying? Don't cry because it's over. Be happy because it happened. I mean, it didn't stop me from crying at the end, but you know. 
I mean, I just had dirt in my eye. That's all. Yeah, totally. Thanks for watching. Bye.